On today's episode, a second GigaPress for the Cybertruck arrives in Texas, Giga Mexico faces environmental hurdles, and Giga Berlin hits their 5,000 vehicle per week goal. Tesla's Gigafactory Austin has taken delivery of several large packages from Italian manufacturer Idra in what appears to be the arrival of a second 9,000 ton Gigapress machine for the new Cybertruck production line. Idra has made several of these high pressure die casting machines for Tesla Model Y production lines in Shanghai, Berlin, California, and Texas. These presses work by forcing molten aluminum alloy into a reusable die mold, which is kept in a low vacuum. For the Model Y, these machines create the front and rear frame pieces, each out of a single casting. But those are 6,000 ton machines, and last year, Giga Texas took delivery of a gigantic 9,000 ton press, which is intended to be used in the upcoming production of the company's Cybertruck pickup. That particular machine had been greatly anticipated by Tesla fans, with Idra and Tesla itself both talking about it in the lead up to its shipment to Texas from Genoa, Italy. The Cybertruck is a huge part of Tesla's upcoming lineup of new and refreshed vehicles, and this monster of a press is reportedly going to be used to cast the largest section of the pickup, the rear underbody, in a single piece. So it was understandable that Tesla and Idra would be excited about getting that machine set up and running, but by comparison, this new equipment has flown right under the radar. Twitter user at Gregor Truck posted a bill of lading on March 20th, a form which records the details of a shipment. On it, we can see that a large shipment of parts is being delivered to the port of Houston, Texas from Genoa, Italy, and the packages are for Tesla and from Idra. But Gregor Truck also uncovered more, a small entry that includes extra details. We can see individual parts which are labeled things like injection and tie bars, but more importantly we can see the weights, and they are heavy, some of them weighing over 30,000 kilograms. Now it's hard to tell if this is all the equipment or if there's more to come, but this does look like a second 9,000 ton gigapress. The biggest clue to that comes from Idra themselves. Back in January, the company showed off another 9,000 ton casting machine on their LinkedIn page, the same way they showed off the original Big Press before they shipped it to Tesla last year. This video had a caption that read, another 9,000 T ready for shipping on its way to Asia, which definitely threw a lot of us off at the time. Tesla certainly hadn't made any announcements about a Cybertruck production line in Shanghai, and the only company in the world who currently needed a casting press this big was Tesla. Given the timing, it would seem that either Idra was trying to throw us all off the scent for some reason, or plans have changed. Regardless, a second press for the Cybertruck line makes sense. We know it takes a couple of months to get these big machines working, but the Cybertruck isn't due to begin production until this summer, and will likely take some time to ramp up. That being said, we don't know exactly how fast these larger presses work. Given their size, it would be reasonable to assume that, at the very least, cleanup between operations would certainly take longer than the comparatively smaller 6,000 ton machines used in the Model Y lines. The 6,000 ton press has a cycle time of about 80 to 90 seconds, allowing an output rate of 40 to 45 completed castings per hour. This translates to about 1,000 castings per day for each Gigapress. Tesla has two casting machines for the Model Y production at Fremont, and they have at least five of them at Giga Shanghai, so it is typical to have multiple units fabricating the same part on a production line. And once a vehicle starts production, Tesla usually aims for a manufacturing rate of about 250,000 units per year, or volume production. The Cybertruck isn't projected to reach that rate until 2024, but this definitely fits the timeline for ramping up production. Getting a second 9,000 ton press now would save a lot of time down the road. Tesla's newly announced Gigafactory in Nuevo Leon, Mexico is setting up for construction and that involves a lot of contracts and promises between the company and the local government. Tesla formally announced the new facility at their Investor Day event on March 1st. The EV company has proposed a $5 billion gigafactory, which is to be built on about 4,200 acres of land just outside of the city of Monterey. 
Some of the biggest things to hash out before such a major project breaks ground is how the local environment will be protected. Details that impose some responsibilities on the company in order to get the permits to build in the first place. In Germany, for instance, Tesla ended up having to promise to plant a certain amount of trees to offset the losses to the forest that Giga Berlin was built on, even though that forest was made explicitly to be cut down for making cardboard boxes. Tesla ended up promising to plant almost triple the trees they cut down and even added a variety of trees instead of just the pines that were seeded for industrial use. Now, in a similar fashion, Tesla has promised to double the required number of trees when they replant on the Nuevo León site, according to the governor. A translation of his announcement reads, I spoke with Tesla's director and he guaranteed me that they will reforest the area of Santa Carina, where the Gigafactory will be installed, with double the number of trees required by law on 1,600 hectares of land. A quick glance shows the site is actually pretty barren. However, Tesla might very well decide to add in more local varieties and keep a healthy amount of shrubbery around the facility once it's done. But to do that, they also have to deal with the water concerns. The site Tesla chose is very high and dry. It butts up against a highland area that clearly used to have a river running through it. You can see the dried up bed in the Tesla renderings of the finished factory that looks like a little dirt road. But we know from previous statements made by local officials that no one is particularly concerned with the large amount of water use that Tesla will need to run their gigafactory. This is likely because Tesla's license to build on that land includes a stipulation demanding they bring water into the area from somewhere close by. Now, this isn't an uncommon practice in land development. Using companies to build out local utilities in return for the use of land is a smart way for both sides to get what they want. But it's not always as easy as that. Apparently, the land Tesla bought had been earmarked for a Six Flags theme park back in 2015, but evidently they couldn't get the funds they would need to bring in all the utilities a theme park requires, so it stayed empty until Tesla bought it. Some engineering-capable Tesla fans have suggested that Tesla has the funding needed to build a robust water delivery system between the Rio Grande River to the north and a local reservoir to the south, which is quite a large project, but also not impossible, and could actually be the best idea to set Giga Mexico up for later expansion. More importantly, the new factory is expected to drastically increase the value of cross-border trade once it gets up and running. Logistics experts are reporting supply companies are already preparing to move into the Monterey area to support the new factory, and Tesla will create up to 6,000 new jobs in just the first phase of operation. Mexico's Undersecretary of Foreign Affairs, Marta Delgado Peralta, estimated that the increase in exports to the U.S. would be about 3.5% annually, or $15 billion dollars. That alone is more than enough money for the government to maybe help fund a new aqueduct project or anything else the Gigafactory needs to function. All things told, it looks like Tesla will clear these first environmental hurdles without much trouble. They have a solid plan that will greatly benefit the local area, environmentally and civically, and they have a reputation for taking good care of the places they build on. It'll be interesting to see Tesla turn this desert highland into something more like their renders. Tesla just announced that Giga Berlin has reached their goal of 5,000 vehicles produced per week. On March 25th, the company posted a celebratory tweet boasting that their facility had hit this goal about one year after they delivered the first Model Y to customers. The Berlin team has been pushing hard for this milestone, which Tesla calls volume production, and considers to be the goal for any facility once it begins production. The company had hoped to reach this rate of workflow at the end of last year, but they are not too far behind that mark. Sure, complications with the pandemic and the supply chain issues that it caused made for a bit of a stumbling block, but it only took three months for Giga Berlin to climb from 3,000 Model Ys produced per week to the 5,000 they were aiming for, which is still very impressive. Next on the plate, Tesla intends to continue increasing production rates, which could be enough to add another model of vehicle to their lineup at the factory. Tesla has already applied to expand Giga Berlin to accommodate a rate of 1 million vehicles per year. Currently, they are approved to produce 500,000 units, and expanding that number will reportedly require adding more room to the facility to fit extra production lines. 
Tesla has had a notoriously difficult time appeasing local environmental activists, but that's led to the company coming up with some really ingenious ways to conserve water and plan their operations more efficiently. Because of this, Tesla has claimed that their proposed expansion at Giga Berlin will not require any more freshwater usage than they agreed to when they broke ground during the first phase of the project. That's certainly a point in their favor, but it's likely Tesla will still have to wait a bit for the local environmental groups to have their say, which is probably the reason the company has applied for this expansion before hitting their current production goal of 500,000 units per year. It might take a bit to get all those forms filed, but by then, Giga Berlin will likely have gotten close to that new milestone, and construction can put up some new factory lines without disrupting operations there. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up today if you liked it. That is so important for getting our content out to more people. If you enjoy the content, then you'd probably also enjoy our weekly newsletter, so sign up with the link down below at theteslaspace.com. A huge thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who are listed on the screen now. You help us make the best content we can, and we really appreciate it. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.